Hello, everybody. Now, today I'm doing something different than what most of you are used to seeing me do. When I started my YouTube channel, I was called Cruise and RV Travel Tips. Now, this was uh, last mid-October. <laughs> and I was pretty much doing things on your know, travels down to Yuma, making videos of that. Or, and I had big plans for doing videos for all the countries we were going to go to this month. I would have been on one right now, cruise. And then COVID hit. So like a lot of us other travel and cruise people had to do, we had to uh, diversify our channels. And that's where I've met most of you good people. <laughs> Since I've diversified, I've gotten so many more um, watchers, subscribers. But today I am going to do one on traveling. <laughs> that's why I got the shirt on with the anchors. This one is 12 things you don't need to take on a cruise. Now, these are my opinions, okay? Now, I've got notes here because someone else had printed something and then I'm, you know, but I'm giving my two cents worth, of course, you know, me and my rambling. The first thing you don't need to bring, these are the major things you don't need to bring, soap and other toiletries. Almost, I mean, not just almost, but every ship is equipped with soap it may not be the kind that you like to use, but what the heck, for a week or two weeks, you can get, you know, you can use a different soap. You know, it can really help lighten your load. The others are shampoo and conditioner. Same thing, they don't put cr cruddy stuff. <laughs> they put fairly good branded things on the, in the ship. So there's always shampoo and conditioner, lotion and shower caps. So, you know, you don't need to bring that stuff. I mean, that stuff can add up. You put it in a, in a, you know, in a little bag. I mean, first you gotta find the smaller sizes or get small bottles and transfer your own. You don't need to. And even if you end up staying in a hotel, like a night or two or a few days before, hotels always have these things in them too. I don't know. I just feel for having a lighter load because, you know, we, I mean, we're in our 70 now. When we're dragging suitcases along, we need them to be as light as possible. And, and this is stuff you really don't need. And of course, if you move up to higher cabin categories, the amenities will increase. So you may find cotton swabs, cotton balls, basalt, sunblock, loofah, uh, colognes, different things like that. But they're not things you have to have. <laughs> And of course, you know, if you prefer to have your own toiletry things, bring them around, but um, bring them with you. But you know, you're just gonna be adding to your heaviness. And uh, in your cabins on the, on the ships, they're always replenishing the supplies. So the next thing is a hair dryer. I have yet to be in a hotel room or on a cruise ship, no matter what category, where there isn't a hair dryer already there. A lot of times they're in a drawer. You have to look for it the first time you're going to use it. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, it could be wall-mounted or in a closet or a vanity drawer. You know, they're, they're just all over. You know, and you never know where they're going to fit them in. Because they got to fit things in. Just like when we get there, we want to fit our stuff in. So don't worry about bringing your own hair dryer. You can get away with using theirs for a week or two, or however long you can be on the cruise. Next item is a clothesline. Every ship I've been on and those hotel rooms, if you look in the showers or, or the bathtubs, there's always those little things on the wall and you pull the string across. I mean, it's not like you're going to be doing a whole load of laundry like you do when you're at home. If anything, you'd be just rinsing things out. And it's so warm in those places that they're going to dry right away. You, you know, just one, one thing to not do, don't drape things over a chair like out on your balcony, if you have a balcony cabin, like your swimsuit or things like that, because if a gust of wind comes up, bye-bye swimsuit. <laughs> so um, it's better just to let the things just hang in the shower. I mean, you know, we, you're gonna be off the ship most of the day, just hang the stuff, probably by the time you come back on, it's going to be dry. Another is beach towels. They always have beach, beach towels um, 
for you to take if you're going on, uh, you know, to the beach or pool size, pool side. They're usually stashed by the pool. If you don't have them in your cabin, they're gonna be by the pool and, and they're handed out as, as you head off the ship if you're going to the beach. So you don't need to bring beach towels with you because those can be pretty big and heavy depending on how many people you've got, it adds up. A dirty laundry bag. Now, um, this person says, of course, you'll find a laundry bag in your closet. It's used for the ship's laundry service, but nobody says you can't put your dirty clothes in that bag. So we've done that, or I've just brought an extra plastic bag with me, and that's what we've put our, our, uh, our laundry in, you know, that we're going to be taking home. Just don't take the bag home if it's made out of cloth and not plastic, or you'll be charged. <laughs> but everyone I have seen, it's been plastic or, you know, plastic bag, or sometimes it's been paper. So you don't have to. Now, we do have cute little you know, ones that we haven't cried yet, but, you know, they'll just be mainly for our underwear because that's the only thing we would be needing to have washed. You know, if we need want to have our pants or things washed, we just send them to the laundry there, and they come back within within a day, if that, if that long. Books. Now, unless you have specific books that you really want to read or you're in the middle of and you don't want to leave at home, Ships have libraries on board. Now, I noticed the, um, we're supposed to be going on Celebrity next September, and that is a huge library in that, in that one. And, uh, you know, some of them, I, don't, I haven't been on yet, but I don't usually go into the libraries because I don't usually read it when I'm on a cruise, but they have a take a book, leave a book. So, you know, bring one in, you can leave it. Now, see, that would work out good, too. You can exchange the book you've read for another one that you can keep. And that way you're not really taking any home any more than what you went with. You bring one book, you're done with it. So the trick is to bring a book you don't care if you leave. <laughs> Snacks. <laughs> it says if there's one thing ships are loaded with, it's food. You can find snacks any time of the day or night. And if you're concerned about random munchy snacks, like when you're in your cabin, you can always take back, you know, I always take back a napkin with a couple of cookies in it and bring it back. You know. Now we do bring snackies on the airplane. <laughs> and I gotta admit, I do bring some of the package, little snacky little protein bars on the ship too, because if you take medications, where you need to have something to eat with it. If you're off the ship and you feel like you need to take something, like me, it's always a pain pill. <laughs> Got to eat something. Nothing's worse than taking a, a, a pill that makes you nauseous for the whole rest of the time that you're off the ship. So I always just stick a couple of little bars in our little carry, carry off, as I call it, carry off the ship bag. So that, you know, Something to always kind of tide us over, or hold us over until we either get to a place where you can buy some food in whatever little town you're visiting or something like that. So, uh, number eight is booze. <laughs> Let's see what she says about booze. Of course, most of them don't allow you to bring wine or liquor on board, or, although there are a few exceptions. In general, they scan your hand luggage every time you board and hold alcoholic beverages for you until you disembark. Most lines will allow you to bring wine but charge a corkage fee, unless you consume it in the privacy of your cabin. <laughs> you really need to bring that wine, bottle of wine, one watt bottle of wine with you, why bother? It's just gonna weigh more, you know? And try to sneak in. I, I don't want to worry about, oh my God, are they going to see what I'm sneaking in and get me for it? Or, you know, just, just don't worry about it. Plenty on board, trust me. Oh, let's see, another one. Oh, computer. You don't need to bring a computer, really. Unless you really want to use it like in your own cabin. Because on some of the, the cabin categories, you have to pay extra for Wi-Fi to use your computer anyway. So, you know, if, if you don't think it's something you're gonna really need for like a laptop or something, why lug that along? We just bring our little iPads. And, uh, you know, they're, they're perfect for a quick email check or, now of course we can't print on our boarding pass, but <laughs> most of the ships have little areas that are, 
have computers in them where you can go use their computers and print things out if you want. So why bring that? But if you want to download photos or check sensitive work email, of course, bring your own laptop. You don't want to use a public one if it's sensitive stuff. Another thing is uh, local maps. On port days, maps of the area are usually available from guest services or shore excursions personnel. I mean, you, you see all kinds of, when you get off the ship, little brochures and things people are handing out to you and they usually have pretty good maps. But that being said though, I'd like to take my own map. <laughs> but if you don't think you're gonna need one, don't bring. <laughs> if you attend port, because they have port lectures also, like a day before they're gonna be going to a port. And you can go um, attend those and see slideshows and, and determine what you're going to go see or do anyway. And a lot of times they give out information uh, you know, with maps and, and things and where to go. The last thing is a pillow. Unless you're like the princess and the pea, most ships will have pillow alternatives to accommodate you. Of course, luxury lines and higher cabin classes may even offer a pillow menu. I haven't been on one of those. With all sorts to choose from, hypoallergenic, extra firm. Talk to your cabin steward if you would like. <laughs> Give them a pillow. <laughs> I just kind of make, make do with what they have. I have a lot of problems with my neck. And yeah, I need a neck pillow, but you know, I even... And always find little things to kind of plop on your neck and stuff <laughs> and put a pillow between your knees like I do. You know, I have plenty of pillows in there. Another thing you do not need to bring is exercise equipment. They've got huge exercise rooms with equipment on the ship. So you just go in whenever you want. You don't have to make appointments. You just go. It says leave your yoga mat and resistance bands at home. They have fully equipped gyms stocked with everything from weights, to BOSU balls and elliptical machines. There's also personal trainers on board or on hand to lead group exercise classes like spinning or Pilates or different things like that. They'll have every day or the night actually before the next day. You'll get what they call it, you know, well on Princess they call it the Princess Pattern. Everything that is scheduled for the next day is on there. And they'll list things like if they're having a special thing on like doing Pilates or, you know, just so many things. There's something for everybody. Trivia, trivia games. I don't know, just too many to the list, really. They really keep you busy. And if you don't stay busy or find things you, you want on a cruise ship, then you're just kind of boring, <laughs> you know, because there's so much to do. So, um... Let me think if there's anything I can think off the top of my head. Let me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what else do we bring them? Really, nothing extra. I know a lot of people talk about bringing like magnetic clips to put on your. To me, that's just another extra thing to bring. I don't need to hang things up on the walls to remind me of where I'm going, what I'm doing. I, I'm a real organized person, though, so I already have all that figured out <laughs> before we even go on the cruise. So I, I don't know. After you go on a few cruises, you do get where you see what you need, what you don't need, because what one person may need, another person doesn't. These are just general ideas right here. So uh, if you watch some of my other videos, you'll see some of the other things that I need or that I, that I bring. <laughs> I try to be as minimal as possible, but it's hard, especially when you're, excuse me, <laughs> when you're packing your clothes. It's like, well, I don't want to bring that. I want to bring that. You know, <laughs> and before you know it, your suitcase is just chock full. So uh, we try to limit ourselves each to one suitcase, not, not a carry-on, a check-in one. And then we have a carry-on bag that we have, like our, our electronics, you know, our, our phones, our iPads, uh, a few snacky items uh, for on the plane. Uh, what else do I put? Uh, sometimes I'll put my makeup and stuff in there. And maybe a change of clothes because there's only one time. And we've gone on, what, 20, 21 cruises. There's only one time that my luggage did not arrive. And that was 
because we flew from Seattle to Amsterdam to Copenhagen. So when it got to Amsterdam, it got mixed up and it didn't make it to Copenhagen. So that's the only time. But it has taught me <laughs> that you can either like split your things up in both suitcases, where some of mine, some of his, you know, so that if one suitcase doesn't make it, you at least have a few things to get by. Toiletries you can almost pick up anywhere, like if you're staying in it, because we always go at least a day or more ahead of time. And you can always pick up some of the toiletries on the, on the, uh, in the hotel rooms you're staying in, or if there's other little items you need to get to bring with you on the ship. They're liquid that you don't want to take and carry all, you know, all the way with you while you're traveling on the plane. Uh, you can find little stores and things where you can buy them for a more reasonable price than what it would cost you if you picked it up at the airport or even on the cruise ship. <laughs> so if you have any questions of me at all with regards to cruising, please ask your questions or make a comment down below. If you uh, like my video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I, I promise I'll keep you entertained with other videos too. <laughs> and um, hit the little notification bell and you'll be notified whenever I post something. So, hope you all had a good summer. <laughs> I know some of you are still having really hot weather. Uh, we're not here, now we're, we're in the 60s now, so, and it's supposed to rain in the next couple of days, but you know, everything needs to be kind of cleaned up after all that smoke in the air anyway. So, um, here's hoping that we'll be able to start cruising again and traveling a little more freer, at least after the first year. Our first trip is next May 1st, and it's just to the Caribbean for a week. But the big one is the following September, over to Europe. So you'll hear a lot about that through the year, hopefully. And it's the one we're supposed to take and be on right now. <laughs> so hope you have a good fall, because this is the first day of fall or autumn. And uh, I love you all. Bye.